All right. So here we are doing more RV stuff. I am in Large Marge. That's the name of my truck because she's large. Um, and I'm heading to the rig right now to change out a part that I was wrong about and y'all were right about. And I hate that. But, you know, we have to admit our shortcomings in life. At least that's what people keep telling me. So here I am saying I was wrong and you're right. Basically what happened, what happened was I bought too much battery. So my rig, which I need to do a whole video on, I'm looking out the windshield, don't worry. I'm filming while driving, but I'm not looking at you. Uh, is a 2022 Heartland Fuel 305 toy hauler travel trailer. She is 36 feet long. She's almost 14 feet high. Um, very heavy and a real pain in the butt to pull, but that's a whole other thing I need to do a video on. Um, and yeah, I got a one ton diesel. That's not it. Um, but what I did was I recently changed out the lead acid battery for an AGM and then was given the opportunity uh, by a company named Golden Mate to go to a LifePo battery. And they sent me a 200 amp hour big old battery uh, and I bought a new box and changed all that stuff out just because I always felt like the lead acid and even the AGM I couldn't run my fridge for very long I know that's a bit crazy because it should be a while but I would go set the rig up for you know a few days before I would go uh, on a trip and put stuff in the fridge and light the fridge on propane and it, I feel like after just a few days like we're talking two, the battery was getting low so I was you know eager to change this out for a bigger battery so I did, and then a lot of you who know better than I do were like, you know, you gotta change the charger in your rig to charge that battery, don't you? And I was like, mm, no, I didn't know that. So I checked and y'all were right. The charger built into my rig is not strong enough to charge up a 200 amp hour lithium battery. So I had to get online and order the correct one. Now, those of you out there going, holy crap, I just did this, that I mess up also. It's not a matter of like, starting a fire because your charging unit's not strong enough. It's just that it's not gonna be able to get the battery to its top. Uh, it'll only get it you know, part of the way there. So what I had to do was find the component in my rig that is auto, -detect auto detecting and will change to lithium ion. But I'm gonna shut up right now and uh, turn the camera off and we'll be there in a minute at the rig and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Spilled my energy drink sharing my pain with you. All right, so what I have her is the proper auto switching power switcheroo guy. So yeah, so on mine, thank God it was one of you that commented on that video saying this is what you need, but that's upside down. Uh, inside your power panel, where your fuses and your breakers are, you unscrew that and take that cover off and you'll see this guy sitting here uh, at least on mine. I'll show this in a second, but the one that's in there is not an auto detect unit. It's just a charger that's set just for lead acid. Won't even do AGM. But when I pull that one out and replace it, it wires up exactly the same. This is supposed to be a 10 minute ordeal and I can tell you from looking at it, yeah, it's the same wiring. Um, you just switch it out, you know, screw it back together and flip on the battery and start the generator and the charging system will take more power and put it to the battery and charged all the way up. So cross your fingers for me, because me and electricity, I mean, I wire choppers and they run for at least a week, you know? So let's see how this goes. Holy crap, is it hot in here? <laughs> I've got my Olight uh, speaker lantern going here so I can have my light to see, because it's dark in here, but I can't, I can't turn power on because I'm messing with, you know, the power. So, so just two screws here, uh, and your panel might be in a different place on your rig than mine is. Mine's right here by the fridge and all that. This thing is filthy still from smoke out. Good God, and I think there's actually probably dirt from Sturgis still in here. So I'm just gonna take these two screws out. This plastic panel is gonna come away, and right behind there is gonna be where the stock one is sitting. Uh, chargers will pull that out and put in the new one. Yeah, so there's the old one. We're gonna take these two screws out. Whoops, sorry, these two screws out. Whole thing's gonna come out. And the wire is probably the hardest part's pathing the wires, because they kind of come back up run through here and you got this in here and those yeah i think that's them find out in a second um but yeah when you pull this out you'll see where the wires are going it's only a few wires but still it's a you know pathing them right up correctly is not going to be too easy but 
it's only a couple clamp screws, you know? Okay, let's see if it catches fire. So basically, I just passed the, this this board I clipped out, yeah, there's a clip right there, to give you access to the back so you can run the hot and, and neck, hot and cold, uh, positive and as Vice Grip Garage says, the SAD cable to the negative, and then this white wire here, green wire there, uh, black wire and a breaker here, and then this uh, uh, electrical nut here. So I'm gonna go kick on the battery and see if everything catches fire. There's no fire yet. I mean, it's gotta be a plus, right? So I went out, kicked on the you know battery connect to the rig, which shouldn't have caused a problem anyway. Uh, and then came, started the generator, fired on the air conditioning, you know, all I did was change the charger, right? So, as I understand it, somebody correct me if I'm wrong. So that unit is what's going to take juice from either the generator or, um, you know, shore power and then charge my battery and do it stronger, if that's a word. Uh, I checked that everything's working. So, like, the, the cooling fan is, is on right now on the unit, running over the heat sink, all that sort of stuff. So it's just that one right there has no switch. The older ones used to have to actually have to actually switch between lead acid, AGM, and lithium ion. Like there's a manual switch on there. That's an auto detect unit. So it's supposed to flip back and forth from each one. Um, I can't really test it that well today because I don't have a shunt on my battery yet. I just ordered it. It'll be here this weekend. So I am going to add. I'll do a video on that. A shunt. Uh, a buddy of mine who works in the boat building business was like, you don't have one of those? I can't believe you don't have a smart shot on your battery. So he is, he sent me the link for the one he uses. I'm gonna install it. Basically, you know, my, I have my battery gauge here, but I'm told these like strong batteries always show that as full. Like that detector doesn't work for damn to show you how much juice is actually in the battery. Whereas this shunt that will connect directly onto the battery in line with a negative line from the rig uh, is Bluetooth and it will measure exactly the percentage of battery remaining and all that sort of stuff. Um, the battery I put in up front, just so you know, I'll put the link to that below, but it's 200 amp hour. It's like the size of two batteries next to each other. Uh, it does have an independent battery management system that has temperature gauges inside it, so we'll shut it off if it's too hot or too cold. Uh, it has an overcharge, undercharge. It has all that stuff to stop any of those sort of nasty fires you hear about with lithium batteries. So it's got all that next gen stuff built into it. Um, it's surrounded with neoprene, so it's nice and safe. There's nothing, you know, rubbing on it, going to dig a hole in the casing or that stuff. But this shunt is going to help me actually monitor how much juice is in it, how long it will last, all that sort of stuff. So I look forward to that being there this weekend. That's all I got. So if you've got, you know, a rig, and this rig is from 2020, so it's not like it's old. If you've got, you know, one of these modern rigs that came with a lead acid battery and decide you want to go lithium, I was wrong. I'm like, well, it's so new, it's got to have, the, it doesn't. And yours may not be the same setup as mine. I'll put the link to where I got my new charging unit from. I would recommend finding your panel, taking the cover off, and pulling your charging unit out, and looking at it, getting the model number off of it, and then Googling it. Use the Google machines and the web stuff, and see, is it auto-detecting, or is there a switch, that stuff? Probably not. And what I did was actually found the one that was equivalent that was auto detecting. And actually one of the viewers, God love him, I wish I remembered his, his handle, I'd say it right now, said like, you need model number such and such. And he was exactly right. Uh, I think because he had a fuel also. This is a Heartland Fuel 305 again for the last time. And I had to do that on a 2020 model. So you probably have to do the same if you do a switch to lithium ion. So there you go. That's all I got for today. Let me know if you enjoy these RV videos. This is mainly a motorcycle channel, but we do use my rig to haul the bikes to far off rallies and then stay in it once we're there. So it's not the same as trailering. I live in this thing when I'm there. I, yeah, the trailer from U-Haul doesn't have a bathroom, okay? It's not the same thing. Anyway, so love you all to death. Take care of each other, other. We'll talk real soon, bye.